Uh, welcome to our first meeting of City Council uh, in, in December. At this time, uh, if everyone would please rise. Mr. Greedy will say the invocation. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Greedy. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's bow our heads and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Divine Lord, we thank you for bringing us today. We ask you to uh, bless us, to bless the city, to bless each, man, each member of the uh, staff, bless the mayor, bless council, and uh, to bless all the residents in this city. We ask you to continue to help, to make, help us to make the city a better place to live and work for all of us, and that we can conduct this meeting in a well discord and that we can live out of here and be safely going home uh, to our families. We ask you this in the name of whom we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Greedy. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, please note that all members of council are present, along with our, our controller, Mr. Glazer, and our salute to Ms. Wild, and we, we give a welcome to Mayor Pulaski this evening. Uh, courtesy of the floor, if you are speaking as an individual, you have three minutes. If you are speaking as for a group or an association, you have five minutes. Courtesy of the floor is open at this time. And the name, name and address for the record. <coughs> Deputy Treasurer, welcome. Good evening, Deputy Treasurer. Uh, 314 North St. Cloud, I represent the Downtown Tennis Association. That's in front of you, the seventh uh, property at 726 West Orange Street. You've seen it before, you've heard about it. Hard had a meeting about it several weeks ago, in which uh, the new demolition or try to save it. And they brought in somebody from NT Bank and Lake U Loan Servicing Corp, which agreed to shore up the building uh, against any possible danger. Well, they had done one single thing yet, and the city then decided to, like the Bloomberg City did it, they put these uh, boards, as you see, against the wall. Now, I don't know, I'm not a structural engineer, but anybody in the right mind can see it's just not going to hold up the wall forever. But uh, when I, brought this, I brought this up at a hard meeting last uh, Monday night, and the hard inspector had said that the city that will comply with what we, we are responsible for. But it would seem to me that council that we are responsible for the safeguard of the community, period. Not just make that little bit there. What they did was apparently a few people complained that Hall Street was inconvenienced and closed. Well, under section 220, the emergency ordinance in the uh, city charter says an emergency ordinance may be adopted to meet a public emergency that is be sudden, clear, and present danger to life or property. An emergency ordinance shall be introduced in the form and manner prescribed for an ordinance generally, except that it shall be plainly designated as an emergency ordinance and shall be described in clear and specific terms the nature of the emergency. Uh, the emergency. Every emergency ordinance shall automatically stand repealed as of the 91st day following the date in which it was adopted but can be reenacted again. I mean, there's obviously nobody's going to get to this wall anytime soon. There's a potential chance of snow coming, I guess, in a couple of weeks. But what if the big snow comes down our roof? Seriously? I don't see it holding up. I mean, if you're down there, you can't see from these pictures how bowed out that wall is. To go down the Hall Street, take a look at it. I mean, it is bowed out. And it's obvious that MNC Bank and uh, Lake View Loan Servicing, you know, uh, if I call them to uh, bring this up, they will put it on hold and then that will be a little bit of a quick. You know, so that's, their, that's apparently what they want to do with this. So I'm, I'm we're asking that you do something with that, that Hall Street needs to be shut down again. Who cares if three people are inconvenienced? I'm sorry. You know, the same three people walking down that alley, if that comes down, the same three people still in the city of Allentown. Even if you did do what you're supposed to do, that, that property is in danger. It's been condemned and it's been tagged razor repair for years. You know, razor repair stickers say, you know, within a certain amount of time period, in general, that everyone time periods goes by, and, you know, there it still sits with all the debris laying around it and everything else. But, we're asking you to actually like take it in here and, and close down Hall Street. It's just, uh, you've been out for yourself during the day. It looks awful. Uh, it's all gone. 
Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Ringer, welcome. Name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Mr. O'Connor. Uh, Don Ringer, 1801 Liberty Street, Allentown, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to say, uh, you read the newspaper the last couple of days, and uh, council has done nothing to disrespect or not serve the people properly. You've done everything you've been voted for to do. You've done a wonderful job. The only person in this building right now that's disrespecting Allentown is Mr. Velosky. And I would urge Mr. Velosky to resign and leave. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hirschwein, name, name and address for the record, sir. Four Farm Racing Street, Allentown, Pennsylvania, zip code 18109. Thank you. The reason I'm up here this evening is the mayor takes credit all the time. He doesn't raise the real estate tax. But he does. He puts a burden on the wage earners in Allentown. We have so many low income people in Allentown that can't afford another tax increase. It doesn't matter, man. You know, if, if this wage tax increase that the mayor is trying to push with the city council also benefits the NIC zone. I saw the paper today, they're going to hire a, an employee for $139,000. I don't think you pay anybody in Allentown. So you don't earn $39,000. But you're going to use our tax dollars that go to the NIC to pay this guy. You just got to look into this. So I don't want this uh, tax credit. Is, you know, when I'm going to see council, I think it's just an ordinance to try to raise more money from businesses through uh, that negative reporting where their tenants are. Since this guy became mayor, it hasn't enforced it one time. So how much do you think we have lost in 10 years in revenue? I think city council are going to look into the reason why the right mayor is not enforcing that just so I can do it. But to, to make business part of the law. And the next thing is, <clears throat> we also have to look into why so many people we live in city council and employment. Council got to get on top of this. We're losing too many good employees. Maybe council should have a meeting with these employees and ask them, is there a main reason why they're leaving? We can't continue to lose good employees. So I think council has a Thank you, sir. Anyone else put it to the floor? Seeing none, uh, we will move on. Uh, approval, uh, approval of the minutes uh, by common consent. Colleagues? Okay, Mr. Hammond, by common consent. Uh, old business, I have, I have something uh, under old business. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Council acknowledges receipt of your submitted budget at 4 p.m. today. When we all have it. I think we brought it down with us at this point. Um, anything for communications? I have something for communications, Mr. President. Um, go ahead, sir. Uh, I'd like to read into the record the memo that I sent to City Council. Um, I've written the memo to City Council. I detailed to you. Uh, uh, and provided you a copy of that. Uh, I want to read into the record um, uh, under the communications uh, clause. Um, last Thursday, I asked some of the department directors and some of the bureau managers to provide me with some examples uh, of the harm that they uh, would see under the amendments that are being proposed. Uh, information concerning that uh, in, in, their, in their responses are included in the memo, and I believe it's important that city council and our residents know the effects of the approved budget. If you look at the memo, uh, the broad-based budgetary cuts enacted by council are senseless, and I believe they're severe in nature, and I think they'll greatly impact city functions as well as well as well-being of our residents. Uh, and I want to outline for you some of those cuts. Uh, the 10% premium pay, these budgetary cuts as enacted by council, I believe will have a dramatic impact on public safety throughout the city, uh, and here are some of the outcomes that will occur as a result of council's cuts. Police, uh, for 2017, the proposed overtime budget for police was $1.8 million. A cut of 10% would be $180,000. That would give the department a budget of $1.6 million. We have not been at that level since 2012. And former police chief McLean could testify to that. Premium pay is used to pay for various assignments and investigations, and it's frequently used to address specific matters of out of crime. Based on past usage, allocated amount of 1.8 million is an appropriate amount to cover the police department's premium pay requirements. Anything less than that, I think, would have a clear impact on crime rates, 
risk the safety of our officers and citizens, reduce the amount of proactive policing services that we provide, and also have an overall detrimental effect on the department's mission. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that with the salary increases granted to the recent arbitration board, 1.8 uh, million even budgeted in 2007 will be stretched thin, uh, and reducing an additional 10% would unquestionably set up the police department for failure. Fire uh, is currently required to have 25 staff on duty per shift. The members are, are off, uh, uh, that are off for vacation, military, uh, job injury, or death in the family are replaced with overtime personnel. Uh, we currently have a complement of 122 members. Overtime is needed to fill in daily requirement rosters of on-duty uh, personnel. Taking into account considerations of the cuts that have been made in fire, the premium count in 2016, and adding an additional 2% raise from the union members uh, makes the additional budget um, by council that you're proposing with these cuts unattainable. Uh, if the premium uh, account does not revert back to the original budget figures, one of two outcomes is inevitable. One, by the end of 2017, we're gonna have a premium account that will be substantially under budget, or two, overtime hiring to replace personnel will have to cease, which is a violation of the current collective bargaining agreement, which will put us into arbitration and potential litigation. Parks and Recreation uh, uses overtime for weekend trash collection and restroom cleaning, special events including news in the park, summer concerts, volunteer cleanups, 4th of July, lights in the parkway, watering flower bowls and islands in Center City, pool and parks maintenance, emergency call outs, snow removal, police coverage at pools in the parks during the summer. But any of these by the amount suggested by council will significantly impact services and it won't impact it in a good way. Restrooms and parks will be dirtier, Repair calls for pools and parks would go uh, longer before being addressed. Uh, patron and employee experiences that resulted in the need for police to support at pools will be more unpleasant and potentially unsafe. And park users will find their enjoyment of the park affected by the increasing number of people who will not follow park rules. Public Works lowered its premium pay uh, 06 account by 13% for 2016. The proposed 20 in, 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 from, from 2016 and the proposed 2017 budget. Council's proposed reduction of an additional 10% across the board will affect necessary planned weekend work in high traffic business retail areas. We can work as necessary to minimize disruption of traveling public and businesses. Examples of projects that need the flexibility of weekend work are the 2017 paving program, installation of LED uh, lights, storm sewer installations, and improvement to city facilities. If the work must be completed during normal business hours, it will result in traffic congestion, uh, irritable business owners, and, and constraints uh, for city staff uh, completing normal operational work. This will also reduce the total amount of work that should be completed during the 2017 fiscal years and cause scheduling issues in 2018. Also, I want to point out the bulk of the overtime in public works is spent on snow removal activities. You notice most of our snow events happen during the night or weekend hours and a cut of this nature would dramatically impact this program in a negative way. DCP uses overtime heavily by the Health Bureau for inspections of food, special events, and weekends. It is also used by building standards for emergency inspections, fires, sinkholes, etc. And again, it would have a detrimental effect on the safety of our citizens. As far as the 10% of personal services that's being cut, a blanket 10% cut across the board for all professional services is not practical or feasible. We have no fluff uh, in this budget, and there's nothing we can do without to ensure the safety and legality uh, in city operations. The term contract indicates that these are signed agreements that cannot be arbitrarily decreased. Uh, let me outline the impacts. The police, if you look at their budget, account 46, has about $526,000. The vast majority of that is crossing guard contract, which the city council approved with all city management. The contract is 433,000 a year, which City Council unanimously voted on and approved, 10% of that would be $43,000. Um, I'm not sure what crossing guards, what intersections you would like us to cut as a result of that, but if Council would please outline that, uh, that would be uh, appreciated by the administration. Uh, one of the line items 46 account is our highly successful and popular Citizens Police Academy, a society where there is a divide between police and communities that we serve. Programs like these, I think, are extremely important. The department has taken great strides to establish positive relations with our community, and it's because of the programs such as these uh, that we deployed. In 2016, we doubled the number of participants in the academy, and we expect a high turnout in 2017 as well. 
any cuts here would be a disservice to the citizens of Allentown. And finally, another 9,000 of that account uh, is for is council mandated its donation to the fire police, which would have to be removed as well. Fire 10% reduction in this account will impact the following. Aerial ladder testing, ground ladder testing, drug screens, uh, the absence of which violates uh, the CBA, uh, matching AFG grants uh, funds. Uh, we currently have about 1.5 million that's needed for equipment. Uh, medical command fees, um, EMS charts, which is a patient care reporting software. Uh, EPRO scheduler used to maintain complex schedules. Uh, Zoil billing software used to generate bills. Medical director fees required by state law to have medical directors to function as an EMS agency. Biohazard services required by contract to dispose biohazard waste per EPA guidelines. Gateway building clearinghouse required to build Medicaid programs and services and our medication vending system, which supports uh, an agreement to maintain the machines that secure and track controlled substances for our DEA regulations. <coughs> parks and recreation, cuts to contract and professional service in the parks and recreation will impact many services that are either mandated or required or important, such as fireworks, changing out our banners, pool drain compliance, obviously we don't want anyone to uh, have a negative uh, experience at our pools, which we could be potentially in litigation for, uh, wildlife management, lake and pond treatment contracts, WPA wall repairs, fuel tank inspections, and marketing and advertising for special events. Also, our effective recreation programs, including the summer basketball program, the adult and youth basketball, volleyball, and baseball programs, summer concerts, summer staff training, uh, background checks, and pool programming, such as water safety, uh, Palooza, and the team dance parties. Uh, the golf course contract services includes a new golf cart lease, the golf cart reservation software, and event tent rentals. The cuts in this category will impact golfers, employees, and the quality of life experience at course uh, that we are working so hard to improve. DCD, a large portion of the funds, goes to marketing, special events, and the Allentown Chamber for administration of downtown Main Street program. Under Council's proposed cuts, these will need to be eliminated. Public Works, Council proposed across the board cuts through each of the departments uh, will include cutting legal uh, uh, cons consultation fees in the Office of Compliance uh, and the federal NPDES permit process. If the city becomes non-compliant, the city could face a fine by the EPA the DEP of up to $89,000 per day as a result. Uh, additionally, any reduction in stormwater NS4 contractual service fees will put Allentown in jeopardy of compliance and subject the city to fines of similar magnitude. Our Engineering Bureau uh, will not be able to complete all the citizen survey services, such as new curb and sidewalk installations required in the city's curb and sidewalk program. Uh, with the proposal re proposed reductions in the number of curb and sidewalks installed in the 2017 curb and sidewalk program, fewer streets will be able to be paved. Under the 2017 street reconstruction program, the survey uh, contract also provides services relating to the installation of stormwater inlets and pipes uh, on those streets. One of the most dramatic implications of these proposed reductions will be fewer fleet vehicle service uh, and repair under the city's fleet maintenance contract. Uh, it's one of our largest contracts. Uh, it's over $2 million. If required to reduce uh, by 10%, that would be $223,000. Uh, the city will be forced to remove approximately 60 to 80 vehicles from the city's fleet uh, maintenance uh, contract or renegotiate the contract with terms of the service provider. Per council directive uh, to reduce across the board, this will necessarily result in uh, proportionally reducing police vehicles, fire trucks, ambulances and equipment, and of course plow trucks. While I think you would agree that servicing our fleet is a priority and necessary for public safety, there is no way that we can make the required cuts without cutting the fleet contract, again, which has already been approved. Along with the fleet maintenance reductions, another casualty of these cuts would be the fuel bill, <coughs> the reduction in equipment repairs an inability to pay for refined AccuWeather advanced adverse weather warnings. This service currently provides us with weather alerts and advice for upcoming weather, high rain, high winds, and snow. Department of Public Works has just acquired Technical Service Bureau. 10% reduction would be uh, effect uh, basically two contracts, the FCC Communications Coordination or Building Safety. Uh, under our current regulations with the FCC, if they are uh, were to request coordination and we were not able to complete the task, we would lose our radio frequency privileges, which are included for police, fire, EMS, and radio system. And the second contract is relates to our employee safety as the floor mats 
for request from HR uh, and uh, goes to basic safety within our buildings. The request to reduction of building maintenance will affect the health and safety of all who work and visit our city owned buildings, sprinkler inspections, generator preventative maintenance, access control preventative maintenance, state mandated elevator service, emergency cell block cleaning uh, in the police uh, service building and the HVAC chiller maintenance are among the many services that are completed under this category. The 2017 budget included long overdue updates. The automation of City Hall HVAC system, the current software is no longer supported and we run the risk of having a system that will no longer work or that we control. Along with decrease in line painting uh, contract pole restorations after knockdowns from vehicle accidents, Pole maintenance required a reduction in the 46 count traffic planning control will also have to affect the grant applications which leverage additional funding sources available to the city. Uh, not completing the line painting as required could make the city negligent at fault for any accidents that may occur in our roadways. Cutting funding for grant applications would be short sighted and would cut off a potential revenue stream to continue to improve the city. Salary reductions and cuts is imposed. The proposed cuts by council be value the hard work, I believe. Our city staff, the administration takes detailed input from department heads as it relates to any increases in, in the salaries. Job functions, increased duties, performance, and marketplace comparisons are all factors uh, leading to these proposed increases to blankly, blanketly removed. And then without ever seeking clarification or understanding the reason behind these proposals, I believe is short sighted. Regarding the 60,000 for a comp compensation study, I'm not sure how you arrived. Uh, as counsel upon this dollar amount, or your reasoning of why you would feel this is necessary, if you could please explain and provide your cost estimates, that would be much appreciated. Council's budget amendment to eliminate a section of the 2017 appendix entitled non bargaining wage range, stating that the intent of council is that these annual budget salaries uh, cannot be increased except by ordinance, can only be seen as a step into executive discretion by, by council, uh, in the approval of non bargaining hires. Aside from the fact that this chart is an appendix uh, to be utilized for information purposes only and not actually part of the budget, meaning one to argue council's ability to eliminate it at all, it seems that council is trying to rewrite right the home rule charter through the budgetary process. Section 308, subsection N of the charter states that the mayor's duties are as follows appoint, suspend, and remove any city employees except as otherwise provided by the charter. Or by law, and unless otherwise provided by, uh, by be reasonable for the employment of personnel necessary for the effective operation of city government. Section 209 of the Charter and Section 115.09 of the Administrative Code, Section 80, it states the city that council prohibitions are as follows Neither the council nor any members of, uh, of it shall in any manner dictate the appointment or removal of any city administrative offices or employees whom the mayor or subordinates of the mayor are employed to appoint except as otherwise provided by the charter, which I just read above. Apart from the fact that this would be impossible to perform the hiring process without a salary wage scale, I believe that the city council is in essence attempting to again change the form of government outlined in the charter by seeking to approve every hire by ordinance and thus micromanaging the employment process negating section 3810 of the home rule charter. This action would squarely place city council in violation of section 209E by attempting to dictate the appointments and rule of any city administrative offices or employees whom the mayor or subordinates uh, of the mayor are empowered to appoint. Finally, the removal of salary from the position of managing director and top two positions at DCD leaves a thoughtless leadership vacuum that will cripple the city's operations and economic development efforts. In a time when we are seeing unprecedented growth and development, this action, I believe, is short-sighted and ludicrous. The action flies in the face of council approval of more than a 15% increase in salary for the managing director in 2015, uh, which four of you on the dais approved. Uh, as council's attempt to eliminate the non bargaining wage range of the budget, I believe the city council is in essence again attempting to change the form of government outline of the charter. Section 805, subsection B of the charter states it is amended if the amended budget increases or decreases or readjusts funding requirements by more than 5%. Or add to the lease program, the budget shall be returned to the mayor immediately for comment and resubmission to council within three normal business days. Budget program 07 0604 and program 0901 contain the, only the salaries of the managing director and the DCD operations manager, respectively. By reducing these salaries to a dollar, I believe council is in fact eliminating these programs 
thus activating the budget resubmission provision outlined in Section 805 of the Charter. I received a memo from City Council on, on December 2nd. Uh, the only, that was the only uh, outside of, uh, of uh, uh, Emily's tweets and uh, reading it in the morning call, that was the only uh, uh, information I got from City Council and notification on uh, the proposed, on the uh, vote on budget cuts. I have tried numerous times to reach out to members of City Council via email and phone calls to no avail. Therefore, I will be resubmitting the budget to City Council, which I have on Wednesday, December 7th. You acknowledge that you have it in accordance with the Home Rule Charter, and I will wait a date for hearing and review of the submission. According to the Charter, you have three days, I'm sorry, you have five days, I believe, to schedule that public hearing. I'm open to discuss the above impacts anytime, and I will wait hearing from Council on these issues. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at this point, I will go on to reports from committees. I will make the statement of uh, all committees while we have budget meetings the entire month of November. No future meetings are scheduled at this time. Appointments. Ms. Alpha, we have a few appointments tonight. Turn it over to you. Yes, we do. Uh, Environmental Advisory Council, um, Michael Risen. Um, is he here tonight? Dr. McGuire said he could make this. Madison can't make it tonight. Do I have a comment from one of my colleagues? On the public? Mr. Hammond, call the vote for uh, Mr. Uh, for Okay, Mr. Yes, Mr. Renison to be appointed to the Environmental Advisory Council. Ms. Appa? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Mona? Yes. And Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Ms. Appa? All right, we also have the Authority Board Commission, uh, or Human, Rela Human Relations Commission. Uh, oh my, the name, please forgive me. Oni Sally Zuzumo? Does that, are you here? Zumo. Pardon? Zumo. Zumo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is she here? Okay. Uh, Jessica Lee Forte, Cortez. Yes. Are you here? Would you like to come up? Uh, oh, well, that's it. Not yet. Uh, uh, that's it then. Okay, good. Uh, okay. So, do we have uh, any comments from my colleagues? Any from the public? Mr. Allen, call the vote. Okay, on okay, well, the appointment to the uh, Human Relations Commission. Um, Mr. Greedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. And Ms. Apple? Yes. And that's the set of keys in the room. Ortiz, would you like to come up and speak? Congratulations. Welcome, Jessica. Good to have you. Glad to take your time. I'd like to express my gratitude to Mr. Um, Mayor Palowski and City Council for the approval. And I look forward to working for the city. Officially now, as I've been very involved in the community, I've lived here my whole life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jessica. And we look forward to working with you, and we thank you for your volunteerism. And I'm sure you'll be a fine addition. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, Mr. Hanlon, um, ordinance for final passage. So what we're going to do is, we're, we're, obviously, we're going to vote on these uh, separately, um, not collectively, we one at a time. Council will have a time, a, a chance to ask, uh, make comments, and then the public, and then we will vote. Mr. Hanlon, uh, we'll start with Bill 74. Uh, Bill 74 is an ordinance of the city of Allentown, establishing a new uh, chapter with the title line of the Business Regulation Taxation Code uh, related to uh, tax certifications. Okay, thank you, sir. Comments by my colleagues? Seeing none. Comments from the public? Seeing none. Mr. Hanlon, call the vote on Bill 74. Uh, Bill 74, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Zappa? Yes. And Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hammond, Bill 70, Administrative Order on Budget. Bill 70, yeah, this is actually a, a sort of a, a, a 
budget amendment, a budget fund, and it's an ordinance of the city of Allentown establishing and adopting the leasing administrative order enterprise fund budget for 2017. Thank you, sir. Comments from my colleagues. Comments from the public. Mr. Hammer, call the vote. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Wire. Yes. Ms. Mona. Yes. Mr. Connell. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Thank you. Bill 71, Recreation Fee Increase Ordinance. Bill 71 is an ordinance uh, revising the fee schedule for city operated recreational sports teams. Thank you, sir. Uh, comments from my colleagues. Comments from the public. Mr. Hallam, call the vote. Uh, Ms. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Greedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. McLean. No. Six and one day. Thank you. Bill 73, EMS fee update. Bill 73 is an ordinance amending the emergency service uh, ordinance. Okay, why don't you read the little script over there? Um, it's a, an ordinance amending the emergency medical service ordinance <coughs> by making the city residents responsible for any ballots due not covered by an insurance carrier for transport deemed not medically necessary by EMS staff um, beginning with the residents third use of the service. And I think this needs a minor explain to us. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, amend, the amendment uh, would be to change standby fee from $80 to $100, and uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Kratz wants to speak to that. If you would, sir, come okay. up here. How are you? The long and short of it is, is the last time that was updated, uh, labor costs were clearly not there today. It's been some time. Looking at comparables um, would puts us right between uh, Centurion Ambulance, which is uh, our neighbor to the west, and the city of Buffalo, which is our neighbor to the east. Eighty dollars an hour um, with top rate uh, union employees on overtime doesn't cover our personnel costs. So if we account uh, vehicle use. We're on par at a hundred dollars an hour with where we should be, and consistent with what the industry standard locally is. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Do I have? Do I have? Um, do, uh, there's two steps here. Do I have a motion to uh, for the amendment? Second, okay, uh, by common consent. So move, let, common consent, let's vote on, let's vote on the amendment. Okay, okay, this is an amendment to change the uh, standby fee from 80 to $100. Mr. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Greedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now we'll vote on the entire bill, Bill 73, EMS fee update. Mr. Hannon, I'll comment to my colleague for the entire bill at this point. Comments from the public on the entire bill at this point? Seeing none, Mr. Hanley called vote on the entire bill, Bill 73. Okay, on the bill as amended, uh, Mr. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Greedy. Yes. Ms. Henry. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hanley, Bill 78. Uh, bill 78 amends a general fund to provide for supplemental appropriation of 600 three thousand seven hundred sixty one dollars reflecting receipt of funds from the lehigh county authority for reimbursement of administrative order reserve for the awards made to the police and fire department pursuant to act uh, one okay thank you sir uh comments from my colleagues on bill 78 comments from the public on bill 78 mr hanley call vote bill 78 Ms. Mota. yes mr o'connell yes Ms. Zappa. yes mr greedy yes mr hendricks yes mr mclean Yes. Mr. McGuire. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, now we're going to go into budget amendments for tonight, December 7th. Uh, no, council adopted a number of amendments at the previous meeting. That previous meeting was November 30th, which was last Wednesday. There are two more actions. The two more actions that I need to present tonight. However, I need to. Uh, Someone please make a motion to waive rule 13 with regard to requirement to pass the budget at a meeting after the amendments are acted on by council and to compress the time into one meeting, which is tonight. Mr. President. 
Well, sir, I, I believe you violated your own rules on November 30th. Uh, your rules say that you have to make amendments available in writing to the public um, administration and the council at least two days prior to the meeting. Um, I, I don't, you know, we can talk about it. Make your statement again. Uh, your, your own rules, if you look at your, your rules, it says mm -hmm. your rules say that you will make amendments available in writing to the public and the administration uh, and council at least two days prior to the meeting. Um, I don't understand where the transparency is in, in what you did on the 30th. <laughs> uh, as I understand it, you uh, the amendments from one of your own members. Um, did, did, did you give a copy to the clerk or uh, post online uh, see the website? That was discussed with the solicitor's office. We suspended the rules that. Okay. Well, well, six of you all agree, and the same budget cuts um, without once debate um, uh, in public. The, the amendments were, were, were part of the agenda. They were, I'm sorry, they were not part of the agenda. Um, all of you fought for this Granicus system, which we spent a lot of money on. Um, I'm hoping it's not a joke uh, that you're voting to slash overtime and contract budgets. Uh, but I have not heard one peep on how the city is supposed to meet these contractual obligations. Would you care to explain? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I respectfully disagree with your statement. You had you had your uh, time earlier where you read basically all the the impact how how the budget the proposed budget amendments would impact the city. We respectfully listened to that. Uh, it was a, a redo of your press conference yesterday, uh, Ms. Wild. You, uh, I respectfully disagree that we did not violate our rules, and Ms. Wild would like to make a comment because we did have discussion with Ms. Wild at appropriate time. I'm not sure what you're asking me to comment on, Mr. Trump. <laughs> Basically, the mayor is saying that we violated our own rules by not giving well, the let, 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 me, let me say one more thing. On December 2nd, when we did the budget, okay, you all complained when, when, that, you when? On November 2nd, no, when? That, that, you know, and we're disappointed that you just received it that night, okay? Yet you took 28 days. Um, you reviewed every single department. You had a chance to look at every potential uh, uh, proposal that was put before you, uh, and you know you you know you didn't have one amendment to the plan during those during those budgetary meetings. Now you're telling me that that you're prepared to conduct a public hearing tonight without ever advertising this to the public uh, on the budget that you just received. Um, um, I don't know what you're going to do with this. I'm assuming you just ignore it at this point because I don't know what a resubmitted budget does um, if you're already going to vote on the old budget with without following the rules of the charter. So you're obviously just going to ignore that part of the charter. Um, but I just don't understand um, how you believe that you're not in violation of the charter at this point. Hey, Roger. I heard you. Let me explain. I like an explanation. The uh, I, I whatever your statement, I will speak personally for myself. Whatever your statement that you just read or, or stated, the other time, I respectfully disagree. I, I think we followed the rules that we were, we were given. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, Are you going to repeat? No, 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 please, please, please. No, I didn't interrupt you. We we follow. I I confidently, confidently feel we follow all the rules of the home rule charter with their proposed budget amendments. Uh, and we presented our proposed budget amendments on November 30th last week, and they were they were passed six to one. Miss um, Wild, if you'd like to add, or how we did the public input. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my, 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 it's my turn. Okay, I'm not going to get into a match here, but listen. Okay, we, uh, we had we 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 talked about the budget amendments, and if my memory serves me correct, we talked about them collectively. We asked the public, am I correct? And then we voted. So we follow the protocol and procedures that are normally done when we have budget amendments. Uh, Ms. Wild, do you want to add or? I, I'm not prepared to comment specifically on the point that's been raised by the mayor at this time. Okay, um, huh. I will open it up to my colleagues if my colleagues like the mayor, but I, I reiterate that the proposed budget amendments were given. We discussed them as the council. We asked the public. We had, I, I think we had a little, a little bit of an input from the public, I don't recall uh, precisely, and we voted on them, and all the budget amendments that were proposed by council members were passed by a six to one margin. That's all I can say. Uh, um, comments from my colleague? I, I would disagree, Tom. Absolutely. And that is, um, you know, I, I personally was very concerned about the tax increase, the income tax increase, 
and, and I, I, I was one of them, one of the people who uh, supported lowering the taxing, the income tax increase that had been proposed by the mayor. And, and I think we're going to use some of that, but we lower it about 10%, uh, I think there is, and um, that will help some of the residents who are make, finding it hard to pay their, uh, their income tax because uh, they're really not making that much money to they say. And uh, that would support just a little bit, as uh, opposed to uh, getting such a, uh, an increase, higher increase of 20%, uh, you help them a little bit. So that, that's part of my answer. And, 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 that's, and, and I, I don't disagree with your statement, but uh, the question was, did we violate any rules? And I respond again, I confidently feel, confidently feel that we do not violate any rules we don't have to get into one amendment, second amendment, third amendment, fourth amendment. We uh, collectively, we did what we had to do and we, uh, we're moving on. So you're just asking, you're just also asking like, for some of the things that we did that you didn't agree with. But well, he already, he, he, you're right, he, he, I don't want look, to miss, get into it. Look, look, the mayor has received our proposed budget amendments. He has given his rebuttal, okay? We listened to his rebuttal tonight and that's where we're at at this point. So uh, if, you, if you, you could have a final statement, Mr. Mayor. Sure, I, I, so am I to assume you're not gonna address the resubmitted budget? No comment. Well, what, what do you mean no comment? That's what I, I said. It's part, of, it's part of the budget, it's part of the charter process. I followed it to the law. How can you say no comment? What do you mean no comment, Mr. President? I just said no comment. You said no comment. Answer your question. You guess what's out? No comment means I will not make a comment. So you're not going to address the resubmitted budget. No comment. You're going to be in violation of the charter. No comment. Well, what? That means nothing, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, the comment that I've been making is I personally have no comment. Anybody else would like to add something? I personally, well, as President of well, City Council, wait. I am totally respectful to you. My comment to you is, I have no comment. Take it for what it means. Take the interpretation for whatever it means. I have no comment. Then I'm, I'm assumed by your not having comment <laughs> that you're not going to address the recent budget and that you're going to be in violation of the Home Rule Charter. I say to you then, you can assume anything you like. If you don't address it tonight, you're in violation of the line. So be it. Any other comments? So much for transparency. Let's go back and forth. Ridiculous. So much for transparency. Yeah, the transparency upstairs. Hey, easy. Anybody else? Any one of my colleagues like to make a comment? Or do I speak for? You speak, but I just have a quick question. Which section of the Home Rule Charter are you saying is violated? Which section of the Home Rule Charter is violated? If you look at the budgetary section, let me find it real quick. Section 805, um, it says, if amended, the budget increase and decrease to readjust funding requirements for the 5% uh, as at least program, which you guys did, the budget shall be returned to the mayor immediately for comment and resubmission to council within three normal business days. Um, you did not provide any uh, 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 submission to me until December 2nd. I now had three business days, which was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which I provided you then with an entire resubmitted budget, as with council. It says council shall then provide a public hearing to be held within five days after the mayor has resubmitted the budget. Read that section for me because I have my home rule charter back here and I don't want to dig it out, but I'll read it. I'll give it to you. No, 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 I, no you stay, you stay, you stay quiet, it's okay. I, I can read you, 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 go ahead. If, if the amended budget increases, decreases, or readjusts funding requirements by more than 5%, mm -hmm. or adds or deletes a program, the budget shall be returned to the mayor immediately for comment and resubmission to the council within three normal, normal city work days. Mm -hmm. The council shall provide for another public hearing to be held within five days after the mayor has resubmitted the budget. So, and, right, and, and also, I, I, I feel that your interpretation of that section and our interpretation differ. Differ. It, diff it differs. Mr. President, how does it differ? Explain. Please explain. Are you going to keep this going or what? Come on. We'll move on. We'll move on. I think it's more appropriate for you to just throw out something and make a statement without explanation to the public, I think, is is 
is quite honestly bad government. Public wants to move forward. Yeah, let's well, move forward. Oh, yeah, we don't need any comments from the general public. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, this never. Is not, this is not the time. This is this discussion between yeah. the administration and council. Yeah. And this Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor. I, I will say this, and this is only final, my final statement. You do not let, you do not have to lecture me on bad government. My <laughs> 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 like final statement, and I'm done addressing you, but you do not have to lecture me on bad this government. Is I will lecture you, Mr. Mr. O'Connell, on, on what the charter says. And, and I said, our, our, our interpretation, what you, what, what you read and Mr. McLean has read, your interpretation and our interpretation differ and you know what and eventually if we need to go further and we know where further is we will do so but you haven't provided an explanation to the general public i'm done you are done we move on is, uh, uh, do i have a motion i'll make a motion it's fine to waive rule 23 with regard to requirement to pass a budget at a meeting after the amendments were acted on by council and to compress the time into one meeting do i have, the, do I have a second i second it by common consent so moved, okay, I, I will read. Number one, the budget amendments for this evening are, the overall salary increase for each non-bargaining position shall be 3%. That will be 1.5% that was in the budget, plus an additional 1.5%. So all non-bargaining positions will receive a budget, uh, an increase of 3%. Uh, I would like to We'll do that one separately and then go to number two. Do we have um, a comment from my colleagues? Well, I guess we should have. Um, we have oh, no, but by common consent. Yeah, we, did, we, we did motion, Mr. Greedy, uh, second the motion, and we did by common consent. Okay. Uh, comments from my colleagues about uh, Amendment uh, 1, the overall salary increase reached now by the position over 3%. Comments from my colleagues. Comments from the public. Who will vote on that? Mr. Hammond, call the vote. Go ahead, I'll give you, I'll give you, you can have a comment. Uh, section 805, Section B uh, states that after public hearing, the City Council may adopt the budget with or without amendments. The amendments to the budget it, it may add or increase programs and amounts and may the leader decrease any programs or amounts except the expenditures required by law and debt service for the estimated cash deficit, provided that no amendment of the budget shall increase the authorized expenditure uh, to the amount greater than the total estimated income and thereby allowing for the line item changes by the city council. So, since you're increasing uh, an expenditure by $150,000, I think you have to outline where the revenue is coming from. Are you saving? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, obviously, from the general fund. Okay. Okay. And uh, we'll miss, uh, our amendment is 1.5, <coughs> plus the 1.5 for 3%. A comment from my colleagues. Comments from the public. Mr. Hammond, call the vote. Okay, I'll vote with the overall salary increase reached on bargaining position shall be 3%. Uh, Ms. Mona. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Reedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. McGuire. Yes. Red Lake 78. No okay. The second one would be I would need uh, we we did a motion in the second and we did the time by time sense collectively. Number two would be acceptance of budget memos presented by the mayor with the exception of provisions in conflict with the city council budget amendments. Council accepts the budget memos, notwithstanding budget memo number five, and elements of others that are in conflict with the amendments adopted. Comments from my colleagues. Comments from the public. Mr. Mr. Allen, comments from the public. Go ahead, come on up. I don't know if it's appropriate if this is a vote on the, the budget salaries and no. Yeah, that, was, that was already done. Okay. This is, this is, but the budget, we need the budget salary salad. Positions that have been not funded. Name and address for the record. Um, the community development position. No, you, you, your name and address for the record. I don't know if you said it. Alan Jennings, oh. 2130 Golden. We're not trying to give you our time, but we need it for the video. Oh yeah. So say say your question again. 
These are for non-bargaining positions. The, on what is essentially elimination of some positions. They've only been funded at a dollar. There's, they're not. That's 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 kind of irrelevant for this discussion, Ms. Wilder. Well, this is the appropriate time for Mr. Jennings' comments because we're at the budget memos one through five and number five is the one that deals with that issue. So, in response to Mr. Jennings' question, yes, this is the appropriate time for comments. So, so your comments are just a few. Uh, please, please, no sidebars, please. This is a very important meeting. <laughs> Mr. Jennings, go ahead your comments. I, I um consider each of you to be uh, a friend. It, this is a small town. We, we know each other. We know each other's kids. We know each other as educators and, and um, former board members and so on. <clears throat> and uh, I consider him to be a friend. And um, he says he's innocent. And, I, and I'm not um, commenting on that issue. Um, con council is angry at the mayor about the investigation, you've tried to force him to resign. This mayor, as you well know, is not a queer. The more you fight with him, the more he fights back. While I'm impressed by your resolve, this isn't working. It's just not working. This week we lost two more extraordinarily qualified people in the Department of Community and Economic Development. To lose Shannon Clory is a shame. To lose Heidi Bear is a disaster. She knows more about CDBG and federal regulations than anybody I've ever known. And to lose her is a, is a shame. Morale in this building is a disaster. We're gonna lose more good people. Two years ago, the sun was shining on this city. Today, it's dark. And as I see it, there's a bad moon rising in the city. But to be clear, I'm not taking anybody's side. I understand your theory, and I understand how much it must hurt to go through what the mayor's going through if indeed he's innocent, as he says he is. <laughs> I'm taking my neighbor's side. We can't get anything done in this city without those positions funded. We've got too many opportunities that we're passing. And so I would simply ask each of you, good people, all of you, who care just as much, as much about this city and about my kids and my family as I do. And I know that and I appreciate that. But this has got to stop. We can't make this city better under the current circumstances. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Mr. Jennings, I, I really can't agree with you more. Okay? And th those positions, and I uh, get, get a couple clarification if I say something wrong, and uh, my colleagues can. Th th those positions are, are in the budget at $1. Am I correct? in the budget that went out. There is nothing to say that if the mayor brings a viable candidate who is qualified to do any of those positions, which would be obviously, you know, with, with the director of community and economic development, okay? That we would be more, more than willing to sit down, listen, and accept. No, our no is never, ever, totally no. I totally understand where you're coming from, and Mr. Hennick, if you want to say something. I, I, I would just say this, Mr. Jennings. <clears throat> I truly appreciate the comments you've made. Uh, I would say this, though. Uh, I think those comments have been made to the person more responsible than anybody here, and that person is the mayor of the city of downtown. That's the dark cloud hanging over our city, and that's the problem we're facing. And when you say about innocence, when six other people have already pled guilty to actions that they've conducted with him, and I think the evidence is clearly overwhelming. And yes, at some point in time, we'll be more than happy to fill those positions when we're part of the process, when we're allowed to make decisions along with the mayor. That has not happened, and that, again, is why there's a dark cloud hanging over us. If I can help with that process, I'd be happy to do that. 
very much appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to make a statement. Oh, yeah, hold on. What's going on? Mr. Jennings, Ms. Staffel, Ms. I'd like to make a statement. I completely agree with you. Whether you like Mr. Pulaski or you hate Mr. Pulaski, that's not the point. It's the citizens. Allentown, when directors tell me they need this much money, when the chief of police tells me he's concerned, I'm concerned. When public works tells me they're concerned, I'm concerned. It's not about Ed Pulaski here. It is about the budget. It's about having the city of Allentown to continue. I did reach out. I want to put it on record. I reached out to the mayor to talk to him because I believe in communication. And I believe what the, what the president said, we can sit down. Yes, we could work out with an economic developer. We could work these things out. And I agree with you 100%. Please out there, it's not about it. It's about you out there, about the citizens. So let us continue our budget. And let's try as, as, as a community, like you said, he hasn't been proven guilty yet. Okay? Thank you so much. Mr. Brady, go ahead. I appreciate what you said, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jennings. Uh, you know, we've been friends for a long, long, long time. And uh, I was in your board of directors for a very long time as well. But I think there comes a time when we have to do some things to provide more confidence all to the public that there is still a body here that is looking out for them. And, and you know, I, I'm not going to comment on whether the mayor is guilty or not guilty. That's something that it's already an ongoing investigation. We're making a determination. Uh, but I, I am going to say that we're going to, we are, we are looking out for the residents. We're looking out to do a study for the, um, for all the uh, uh, staff here in the city, and that this has to be an equitable amount of salary increases for them as well. And, and that we do hear from about them and from them that the morale is very low. You're right. The morale is very low. People are dropping out of flights from the city. Unfortunately, I've never seen anything like this in the last 20 something years. I think about it. Okay. So, we want to be transparent. We've been transparent. We listen to the public. We invite the public to speak. I mean, I've done it in Spanish and English. You know, they just to come out on a radio station and converse with the people so they can hear what we're doing. I just did it a month yesterday, as a matter of fact. And it is something that, you know, that we need, we're going to continue doing. So I, I appreciate you coming over here and explaining, but you know, there, there's a time when we have to do something. And the money is in the general fund. We will still, we can, we can just come to do a transfer memo and change that back to the to full, I mean, to the full amount of the salary for the director of the economic development, as the, uh, as the president explained. So it's not that we're raising the position. The positions are there. Any other comments from my colleagues? Any other comments from my colleagues? Okay, I'll go ahead, Mr. Foskey. Uh, and first off, um, people are leaving because of retirement, Mr. Reed. Okay, we had one gentleman that was 35 years. We had another who was 32 <laughs> years. We have Heidi oh, Bear, who been here for 27 years. We have Shannon Flory, who I can show you, you already know, because I gave you a copy of her letter, that took a job in the private sector who you couldn't compete with because we don't have a salary scale, as I have been proposing, that competes with the private sector. But I do have a question for the solicitor. Uh, in section 308, section 209 of the charter, it talks about who uh, has the ability to uh, hire and maintain staff. For the council president's explanation of what the dollar is for, that is basically to uh, be able to choose who the staff is. Um, I think it's a direct violation of the charter as outlined in section 308 and 209. I, I never, I never said, I never said choose. I said no. I said if you would bring a viable candidate, okay, that would have the integrity, the honesty, the character, the qualifications, we would be more than willing. Let me finish. We would be more than willing to listen to you and that candidate, and then, and talk to that candidate. You, by, by eliminating it and making it come back, okay, to refund the position. You're, you're basically trying to, to change the, ch the charter through the budgetary process. But I have brought you a viable candidate. His name is, is, is Oscar Montoya, okay? I presented him to you during the budgetary process like you requested. Mm -hmm. He has three master's degrees. Mm -hmm. He would be the first Latino candidate uh, to be able to, to serve in the position of managing director. Mm -hmm. I have not heard a peep from council as regarding to 
actually interviewing him. None of you had expressed interest, even though I've reached out about actually meeting the gentleman. No. And so, and so I, I'm confused. When you say you want viable candidates, how much more viable do you want? At, 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 at that, when you talked about Oscar Montoya, you spoke about him for the managing directors, right? Mm -hmm. And when you were here that night, I said, we will be in touch. We've been pretty busy, okay? We've been pretty busy. It, it, our, it is our call. When, when you nominate someone for a directorship, you bring that nomination to us. We have 60 days to act on that nomination. Is that right? That's right. Okay, days but, uh, uh, what's that? 30 days have passed. No, 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 but that, that's when we, we, we call the shot on the manager director, not you. He's not a, he, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to go and say, but when you, when you bring a nominee for a directorship, we have 60 days to go forth the process, and we did it with the fire chief, and we did it with the pol uh, police chief, and then we almost tried it with Mr. Messenger, and then we did it with Mr. Walker. But when you bring a candidate like Oscar Montoya in front of us, that is our call when we start the process, and we're not there yet. Okay, Mr. 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 President, Go ahead. in all due respect, mm -hmm. you were an administrator for the school district. You hired many folks, did you not? Probably. Yeah. By, by, would you think a qualified candidate, let's say for a principal, would wait 60 days to actually get the job? It would depend on the immediacy of the position, and I don't think the immediacy of the manager director was critical at this point. My own opinion. My own opinion. Okay. Anybody else want to weigh in on that, sir? We are are in public comment. Um, Mr. Malavinsky. I think Malavinsky. I asked the solicitor for a comment. I didn't hear the end of the question because it was interrupted. I asked section 308M and section 209 and, uh, and section 115.09 of the administrative code. Actually. Section 209E of the Charter, uh, if by imposing what they're proposing, if it's a violation of the Charter. Uh, I'm not going to comment at this point on whether it was, a, because I'm not clear what the proposal is um, that the mayor is referring to. The, the Charter speaks for itself in terms of the powers and duties of the mayor under Section 308 and under Section 209, um, but I'm not quite clear on what the proposal is with respect to this specific individual that the, the proposal is they're not going to fund the position as, as outlined in the budget so they can go back and then fund it uh, when they feel it's appropriate to hire somebody. Well, um, that's something that's been addressed by the solicitor's office to both council and the mayor um, already by way of written memoranda and I don't know that it needs to be discussed publicly because there's legal opinion involved. Um, but there is a clear, well, to the extent that this charter is clear, which is a, you know, to, a, a big caveat, um, the hiring of employees, um, departmental and bureau employees specifically, is vested in the mayor. There are certain rights of council to approve or disapprove appointees, including the managing director. Thank you. All right, Mr. Malavinsky, name and uh, address for the record, sir. Michael Malavinsky, 3530 Congress Street. I would just like to note that uh, <clears throat> before Mr. Pulaski's first term that began in 2006, there never was a managing director. As a matter of fact, it was decided that uh, we were going to, there was a debate prior in prior years, if we should have a managing a director or a mayor, and it was decided that we were going to have a mayor, and uh, <clears throat> Mr. Pulaski arbitrarily hired Mr. Doherty, and previous to that hire, there never was a managing director. I, I'd just like to note that. Furthermore, uh, I've been interacting with community development for, for decades. And just as Mr. Pulaski tried to uh, make Mr. Walker, after you disapproved the funding, he decided to make Mr. Walker the uh, man operating manager, I can assure you that there's underlings there now and all the departments are still operating. Uh, and for years, Allentown has, has been a little chief heavy in Indian light, so there's, uh, there's, there's plenty of uh, supervisors 
we can carry on the works of the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Any you other comments from the public? Can I clarify? Uh, first of all, I didn't have to be hired a managing director. Uh, council voted on the managing director. Um, in fact, you all approved a salary increase for managing director. We, 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 you, we, Mr. O'Connell, and you, Mr. Andrews, we, 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 and you, Mr. Green, uh, and you, Ms. Voter, last in 2015. So um, to, to now say that somehow we're currently <coughs> that this position is not necessary after nine years, uh, and by the way, there was a position that was called chief of staff before that. Yeah. So um, Mr. Gree, I believe, voted on it uh, uh, for the managing director position, so it wasn't something that I did arbitrarily. And Mr. Yeah. Walker's hire was, was under the preview of the charter. I had all the rights because it was a it was a position that was approved by city council. I didn't do anything that was uh, uh, separate and apart from my duties as mayor, which is to fill a vacuum in leadership in that particular department that you are now creating. And, and I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Mr. Blasky, right. What would be called a manager, director, chief of staff? We can go way back to Joe Dodona, had Carl Kirker, Bill Hayden, had Gary Day, and I can go on and on, and let's see, well, um, and a couple others who have, they all call, call different things. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, what's that? Hey, Benoni was Roy Opera Box. Yeah, and they've been called manager, director, chief of staff. What's that? Or they call the business manager. Yeah, that's right. Okay, any other comments on number two? Seeing none from the public. Mr. Hammond, call the vote. Okay, except for some of the question uh, memos, Ms. Mona. Yes. Uh, Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Mr. Reedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. Clean. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sir, Bill 64, Solid Waste Fee Ordinance. Bill 64 is an amendment to the uh, Solid Waste um, Fee. And to put the fee at $375. Right, 375 which stays st stable over from the last several years. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hannah, call the vote. Let me see. Uh, Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Appa. Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Blaine? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Yes. Right, Thank you, sir. Bill 63, Solid Waste Fund Budget Ordinance. Uh, Bill 63 is uh, adopts the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund Budget as, uh, as amended. Thank you, sir. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hallen, call the vote. Uh, Ms. Appa? Yes. Mr. Grady? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Yes. Mr. Wire. Yes. Mr. Warner. Yes. And Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Bill 79, golf fees. Bill 79 is. Uh, oh, I, I, oh I, I went from. Okay, let's go to trucks for fun budget. I'm sorry, my mistake. I went from 63 to 79. So that's 66. All right, sir. Read Bill 66. Bill 66 adopts the uh, trucks for budget fund. As okay, thank you. And, and by the way, all the, all these bills that we're talking about, so we seem to have gone pretty fast, but they were all discussed at budget hearings with the, uh, the directors here that night. We had question and answer, we had the public question and answer, so that's why we kind of, did, we did a lot of our homework uh, in November. So Bill, Bill 66, and comments from my colleagues, Trexler Fund Budget. Comments from the public. Mr. Hamlin, call the vote. Uh, Bill 66, uh, Mr. Uh, Greedy. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Hamlin, Bill 79, golf fees. Bill 79 is um, a uh, amendment to the golf course fees. It uh, adopts various fees at the golf course. Thank you, sir. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hamlin, call the vote. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. McLean? No. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Zappa? Yes. And Mr. Green? Um, no. Uh, Mr. President, I have five yeas in two days. It's just there with passes. Who would be five? Bill 67, Golf Course Fund Budget Ordinance. Uh, Bill 67 is the Golf Course Fund uh, Budget as amended. Uh, Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hannah, call the vote. Uh, Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? 
Yes. Zappa. Yes. Brady. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Right there, 70 years ago. Mr. Hammond, Bill 68, Equipment Fund Budget Ordinance. Bill 68 is uh, adopting the Equipment Fund uh, Budget for 2017 as time. Mr. My colleagues. Mr. Uh, from the public, Mr. Hammond. Oh, do I have any questions? Uh, copy of the comment. Uh, uh, the equipment fund budget. Sorry? The equipment fund budget. Okay. All right. Seeing none from the public, Mr. Hammond, call the vote. So the uh, equipment fund uh, budget as amended. Uh, Mr. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Mona. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Zappa. Yes. Greedy. Yes. 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 Bill 65, liquid fuel budget. Uh, liquid fuel budget adopts the liquid fuel fund budget for 2017 as a, as a minute. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hamill, call the vote. Uh, Ms. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Zappa? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Hamill? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Hamill, Bill 69, risk management fund budget? Uh, Bill 69 is the risk management fund as, uh, as amended. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Allen, call about. Uh, Ms. Mona? Yes. Uh, Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Zappa? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Clay? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Allen, Bill 72, uh, E911 fund budget ordinance? Bill 72 adopts the E911 fund. Yes, Comments from my colleagues? From the public, Ms. Hammond, call the vote. Uh, uh, Ms. O'Connell. Yes. Uh, Ms. Zappa. Yes. Ms. Greedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. McLean. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Ms. Mona. Yes. Okay, we'll go into uh, Bill 80, uh, the capital projects. Uh, this, this bill was introduced late by the administration. Uh, we need an amendment and pass it by six people to reduce the 14-day waiting period. Do I have a motion to for that amendment? make such a motion. Second. Second. Mr. Uh, Hendricks, a motion and Mr. Dr. McGuire second by common consent. Yes. Okay, Ms. Wild, give me the procedure protocol. We'll vote in the amendment, then we'll vote on the capital projects. Yes. Let's vote in the amendment, Mr. Hamill. Okay, on the amendment, you would add a uh, new section, like a section four that um, gets rid of the uh, 14 day waiting period. Okay. Okay, um, vote on the amendment. Okay, on the amendment to do that, uh, Ms. Zappa? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Now we'll vote on the Bill 80, the capital projects. Mr. Comments from my colleagues on Bill 80, capital projects, budget. Comments from public on capital projects, budget. Mr. Hallett, call vote on Bill 80. Six votes for that waiver to be in effect. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Zappa? Yes. Uh, Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Dwyer? Yes. Mr. Spoda? Yes. And Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Okay, Bill 81, the grant fund. Again, this bill was introduced late. It needs an amendment to reduce the 14-day waiting period. Do I have a motion? So, Mr. Greedy made a motion. Dr. McGuire seconded by common consent. Okay, Mr. Hanlon, let's vote on the uh, amendment. Okay, that the uh, waiver uh, period, Mr. Greedy? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Mona? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Zappa? Yes. Okay, so the amendment, the amendment passes. Now let's vote on, well, now we'll talk about Bill 81. Comments from my colleagues about Bill 81 in its entirety. Seeing none comments from the public about Bill 81 in its entirety. Yeah, it's fine, uh, what's that? No, the Bill 81 is the grant fund. The general fund is next. Okay, uh, comments from my colleagues about the grant fund. Seeing none, Mr. Hamill, call a vote on the grant fund. Oh, it's on the grant fund, and just for the, for the record, that all these bills were considered in the respective uh, budget hearings, but they just were introduced appropriately. Uh, Mr. Green. Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Moda? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Zappa? Yes. Okay, 
Um, Bill, Bill 75, the general fund budget ordinance. Uh, Bill 75 establishes the uh, general fund budget for 2017 as amended. Okay, uh, comments from my colleagues on the general fund budget ordinance. Seeing none from my colleagues. Uh, any comments from the public? Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I have two questions, uh, Mr. President. First off, if you go along with your proposed cuts, 10% of the contractual services, uh, I, I need to understand how I'm supposed to administrate a 433,000 contract that you approved with an allocation of only $390,000. Can you please explain that to me? Is that for a crossing card? Yeah. Can we get 150,000 from the school district? Uh, we do, but that's part of the, that's, that's already built into the contract. I mean, their contract, Mr. McClain, is, is 433,000. When I reduce it by 10%, it's gonna go down to 390. It doesn't matter where we get the revenue from. Right, so it doesn't matter if we get it, if we get 150,000 from the school district. No, no, you're, you're also, missing my point. It's within the budget. It's, oh. it's already, that's already calculated within the budget, okay? You're reducing the, Let overall, me you're reducing the overall expenditure which was contract them, which is a forty four hundred thirty three thousand dollar contract. You're now reducing it to three hundred ninety thousand dollars. Should we negotiate? What am I supposed to do? And then I guess I have a question to the solicitor, which if you could please opine on, on you know, um, what the city can expect by you know relating to vendors when they no longer are being paid under the terms of the signed contract. Well, it's too general a question for me to be able to answer, but I can address. Oh crossing guard contract and Mr. McClain's question because I'm intimately familiar with it. The contract amount it was what we agreed upon with the vendor, how which was like four hundred and thirty thousand roughly. Um, the amount that we received from the school district goes toward that. Whatever in this case it was hundred and fifty thousand dollars for this year, the balance to be paid by the cities. But the total contract amount was already agreed upon with the vendor was um, the $430,000 figure. In response to the mayor's question, um, to, to the extent that contracts have already been executed and amounts agreed upon, um, funds are going to have to be allocated to pay for those contracts because we have contractual obligations as vendors. Um, and whether they're approved in this manner or some other manner, the fact of the matter is that to the extent that we have executed contracts, the city has an obligation to, to pay those contracts. So then I ask the question again, how would you expect me to pay for the contract? One, it, sure. If 433 is contractually obligated, mm -hmm. and we're only allocating 390. Mr. Mr. Green, you're chair of budget and finance, right, sir? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for all budget, um, First of all, uh, obviously, uh, some of the contractual obligations that we have uh, that may have some impact as we pass this budget, you can still bring them in. We can do a budget transfer like we've done in the past, and we can put the money in that particular account uh, that needs to be put in. Like we have no idea how to begin with. Uh, it's nothing new. We've done that many times. We do it all the time. Oh, but what's, what's the point of the cut? It, it, I, I, honestly, you're in violation of the charter again because. <laughs> It talks about it talks about you know budget cuts, uh, except for expenditures required by law, which I would think a contractual amount already agreed upon is required by law. As long as we, I mean, she, I mean, the, the, the budget budget plan, we're not violating the contract. You didn't say that. Yes, uh, yeah, she did. She didn't. She said that the contract is already signed, and that uh, we're not in violation. The, the money that we got, the uh, four hundred and thirty thousand dollars, that's a contract. We got 150 from the school district. That's gonna. We have to come up with the money somehow. We do that through the budget transfer. Wait, you're saying that we, we should then all these contractual items, okay? That we have contractual any items. Any of them. We need to come with budget amendments. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely <laughs> insane. Why would you? Why would you do it to begin with? What would be the point? <clears throat> any other comments from the public? Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, on the general fund budget? Yes, yes, go ahead, Ms. Atlas. That has always been my my question. Um, the fact that we're going to cut these and then have budget transfers to give them back to them if they need it. Am I correct in that? 
we're cutting it, and then we're we have a budget transfer. We're, 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 we're reducing by 10 percent from 46. It doesn't necessarily say that, as Mr. Reedy stated, down the line we can do transfers. We, 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 account we, 46. Uh, 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 as you know, um, it's up. Account 46 and account. Uh, how many things in there? Some of them are contractual, some of them are not. Okay? The ones that are contractual, uh, we can always put the money in because we are, you, you're right, we are taking some money out, the percent of it, but you can be, the, you could, it doesn't have to be from the contract, the money is there in that account. Uh, out of that account, you may have, a, let's say, just to give you a number, $10,000, okay? 5,000 may be contractual obligation, 5,000 may not. But, but with Mr. Mr. The, the, the budget requires us to be balanced, okay? The budget I presented to you is balanced. By taking $600,000 out of revenue and then reducing this when we have contractual amounts, the budget is not balanced in accordance with the charter. I don't think you can just do this and then say, hey, so we'll add it back in. What's the point of the budgetary process? I mean, this is what we're here for. Then, then should we do every expenditure or we have to come back for, for additional appropriations? Why not do the whole budget that way then? Sure. I don't understand. We're just doing account for the second. Okay, so, so oh, 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 I have one other question. Uh, our fleet management contract is $200. Yeah. So 10% would be $200,000. Can you please explain to me which vehicles you would like me not to service? Yours. It's like yours. That's, that's the only way that the contractor is going to is going to basically what, what's the budget? Two million dollars. Take two hundred grand off of that? Yeah. So which we so service, service service as many as you can for one point eight million. It's about forty vehicles that we have to take out of service. So which ones we not? I can find the three we can do the same thing. It's ridiculous. Do it ourselves. But then, the issue is, if you follow this line, we're going to do this with every account, I mean, line item from account 46 on, on every single budget. I, mean, I don't know if you want to. And I believe you should, because we give you a line on budget, okay? To give us a blanket budget without telling us where to make these cuts, I think is, quite honestly, inappropriate on your part. You it, should it, tell us where the cuts are coming uh, from. Isn't that the, the, the mayor's... Um, no, I, I presented a budget that was balanced. Is, 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 isn't there something for the mayor and the his cabinet administration to look through? Not, not when you have contractual <laughs> obligations, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Mr. Blaze, you have a comment. I, Mr. Blaze, you're not control. I do. I, it might add some clarity. It might not. Um, I may be agreed with. I might not be agreed with. It seems to me that the amendment to reduce the account 46 by 10% reduces the whole allocation by 10%. It doesn't necessarily affect individual contracts within. What it does force uh, the administration to prioritize within that general, within those general accounts. That being that being said, um, the administration may find and council may find um, that they have cleaved a bit too much from this. Um, the mayor has raised some fair points. There's some major um, expenses there um, that definitely impact the safety and operations of the city. However, to say that you're cutting each contract 10%, I do not believe um, is accurate. You're just cutting the whole line item 10%. Once again, it forces the administration to prioritize within a, a new budget amount. And, and, and we did. We, we gave you a balanced budget that was very austere, okay? So there's no fluff in the contractual line item. Um, as Mr. McLean can attest to, because he's been through my budgetary process. Um, we've gone through every single line item and looked at it, and, and quite honestly, there's really no fluff in this budget. So every contract is, is a necessary for the operations of the city. I can go to overtime too. If you cut back $180,000 of the police, which is the largest amount, okay, of, of, of expenditures in the budget, the police department, what do you want me to cut? 
We will do that. We will do the impact of the uh, 10 percent over time premium pay and 10 percent account. But Mr. Reed, make a, make a final comment. Very, 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 very quick. You know, if, if we, we don't, this is our, this is our job. Your job is to present the balanced budget. And you're doing a good job in defending, which is okay. Our job is to look at our budget, study it, and make cuts sometimes, or add something, and change things around. That's what we're doing. So that's our process. You can't change things around. You have to do a great job explaining your logic or how we're supposed to operate. Everybody else can do it. Mr. Reedy, finish? No, no, no. Okay, we, the council had their comments, uh, the public had their comments. Uh, we are now going to vote on the Bill 75, the general fund budget ordinance. Mr. Hamlin, call the vote, please. Okay, on the general fund agenda Monday. Uh, Ms. Zappa? No. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Yoda? Yes. And Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Mr. Hannon, Bill 76, the EIT tax rate ordinance. Bill 76 is um, it's the earned income tax ordinance as amended. And do you sir, have comments from my colleagues on Bill 76? I have a comment. Yes, Ms. Appen. Uh, I respectfully disagree with the people that think that um, this tax is a better tax than property tax. One way or another, we're gonna have to pay a tax. I'm a senior, and we have many, many seniors out there, and we're actually landlocked with a lot of property. Um, when a senior has to, when the taxes go up, and we have to pay this, and we're on a fixed income, it makes it difficult. Now, we have a workforce out there, and it's, 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 it's flat. It's, it's, it's perfectly done. It's, it's, it's done with, uh, if you make 20,000, you only pay so much. If you make 150,000, you pay so much. This alleviates the fact that I'm not gonna have to pay a property tax. There's many people out there that live in apartments. They, they, their children go to school. They don't pay uh, school taxes. They don't pay income taxes. And I feel that this is a very fair tax for everybody across the board. Now I put my microphone on. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green? Um, thank you. I, you know, I, I agree with you. It's, it's a fair attack to, uh, to, to uh, uh, increase, if we have to increase taxes as opposed to property taxes. I, I, I not one would like to increase taxes. And I mean, everything is increasing. And, and I, you know, I, I, I'd rather have the income tax increased than the property tax because people are from the city, not only within the city, but from the city in general, not in town, people who can afford to move will move. If we continue to increase property taxes, we have one of the highest property taxes in the region. I mean, Bob McCarthy has, what, 1%, 2%? You know, we have about, what, 17 mills that we pay, something like that. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a proper tax to increase, but if we can reduce it a little bit, it can save somebody from being homeless. And that's what I think it's doing. Thank you. Any other comments on the EIT? Uh, I, 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 actually, uh, comment from the colleagues first. Mr. Mayor? I don't see how it's going to save somebody from homeless. We're talking about a $16 annual amount here for the average ratepayer. We're talking about four cents a day, 30 cents a, a week, or $1.22 a month. Oh, it work. It's a little more than what you buy a cup of coffee for at McDonald's. But what we are doing is throwing the budget into unbalance, and we're throwing a five-year plan into an unbalance where we're going to have to take more out of the uh, unappropriated uh, balance. Now, I want you to know that we're going to negatively affect the bond rating. All right, we're going to have to go before Standard and Poor's and Moody's in the next month because we just refinance some bonds. They're going to give us the bond rating. They're going to look at what we just did here tonight, and they're going to look at it negatively. So, you know, if you, you know, you, you, you talk about how you want to do this for the benefit of the city, this is not helping the city. You're, you're going to affect our long-term credit ratings. You're, you're actually going to negatively impact the operations of the city. And uh, I just want to go on record that saying that, I, I, you know, you've also thrown off the five-year plan. 
So I don't see how this is good government on your part by not looking at the long-term implications of your financial decisions uh, without any discussion, without any discussion with staff, without any collaboration with department heads. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when the announcement came last week that 610,000 or roughly in that amount was being reduced from the EIT, I did not get clarity and I have not seen the amended bill as to what the new rate is going to be because I presume that you're doing a rate that would be other than 2% if indeed you're trying to take $610,000 out. The, 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 we talked about obviously, the, the 10% the 10 reduction in the EIT was the 10% of the increase. You're missing the point, you have to have a rate. Right now it's uh, yeah. 2.0, it would be the new rate. Well, well, it, well it, what, did it, what, what was the increase? I'm assuming you all figured out what the rate is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what the rate is right now, but they can figure it out. No, 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 what you have to provide in the bill. A $600,000 decrease this year would necessarily come uh, from the new tax and to get that much of a decline in uh, revenue is going to come from that portion of the revenue for which we will only get three-fourths of it annually because it won't come in until April. So if you were aiming to get that amount, the annualized effect would actually be $800,000 because it would have to necessarily, if you're trying to take 610, that would come out of something that is only, we're only gonna get to three quarters this year. Uh, I, I wanted to make that clear because right now, I, I've not seen a rate change. I, I know what the general intention was, but I did not see specifically what alteration was intended. We're gonna have to report that rate change to DCED so they can actually publicize it. Which is Mr. Green, um, you want to do your calculation now? No, sure. It was a, it was a ten percent. The increase, the decrease was ten percent of the rate increase that he. The rate increase. Mr. Hartzell, give us the numbers that you started with. The DIT increase, one point. The rate for this year, when you include the portion that is collected by the school system, is at 1.65%. Mm -hmm. The increase that is proposed in the mayor's budget takes us to an even 2%. Mm -hmm. and the point, point three five increase would be 0.35. Mm -hmm. You could argue mm -hmm. that you would want to come down to an increase of 0.315, but it's not entirely accurate for the reason that I said and that there's a delay in some of that tax collection. It's going to fall somewhere or at the specific to the nearest decimal or in the 197 range is what it will get on an annualized basis probably the $600,000 you're looking for in future years. The, the, the school, the school that portion is uh, how much? It is 0.5% the remainder of what is this, the portion that has been brought forward to you has the city's portion going to 1.5 percent. So that, that you, you, present, uh, you present an ordinance without any, any numbers in it. Which you that was the total increase of that No, no, you, you, you have to present a number that, if you look at the ordinance, is an actual number of what we're taking the EID to. Mr. Arzo, you said that we, when we increased it by 0.35. Okay, he, he hasn't even done the calculations. We're not going to just do something right here right off the bat. Well, you want us he to do it? Asked us. You want us to do it? Well, you shouldn't vote on it. <laughs> we, we know what we know what the we know what the ten percent decrease would save the city. I mean, save the EIT people, the people who the residents of the city. Yeah, you, know, you can figure it out very, Mr. Hartzell. You're yeah, you're not the average. I figured. I, I actually calculated it now, but you know. Well, if you, if you go, well, you said the increase was 3 point, 0.35, is that correct? Take 10% off of that, so you go. Uh, 0.035, so you're talking, well, you were close to like probably, probably, one, probably, probably like 1.965. At, at that point, you're talking 1.965. Yes. Which in DCED you were aiming to take away 
point seven one tenth rate, but again, that is factoring in a, a revenue increase we're only getting three quarters of, so the annualized impact on that is probably going to be in excess of. And you stated earlier, maybe eight, eight, more eight uh, of the eight hundred thousand. We're trying to take up seven hundred thousand. That's near whatever rate change would get us to that is going to have an eight hundred thousand dollar annualized effect beginning in twenty eighteen. So the number we come up with is 1.965, correct? No, the, what he's saying is it's going to be less than that. They're going to have an $800,000. Right, no, I know if you have an $800,000 impact. So now you have more, uh, I, I guess, costs that you're going to have to pay somewhere along the line because then you have a bond balance budget. Mr. Um, any other comments from the public? Uh, well, we have a number. You have to put it out there, Mr. What are you voting on? We're voting on the 10%. Mr. Greedy, the, 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 your proposal, the budget is decrease. The ten percent decrease. 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 You, go, you go from the 0.35, you take ten percent of that, you get 0 0.035, and it takes you down to uh, 1.965 instead yeah, so of the 2.0. Understand that what he just said is that you're not going to get 800 balance. I understand. Always, I want to say now you're unbalancing. I understand. I totally understand what he's saying. So, <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. budget. Well, give us some uh, direction. Uh, there's an amendment to EIT. The amendment would have to be that we go ahead. Well, I'm not going to do the math, but I will tell you, you need to have a rate. You have, you yeah. have a tax and rate. It, it, it seems like we agreed upon the 1.965. I haven't done the math, but I heard what Ms. Mr. Hartzell said. And, and we figured it out. The famous Hartzell figure, we figured it out. We came to 1.965. So I would suggest to get to the, to the 600,000 based on what Mr. Hartzell said. You should not do 1.965, you should be higher. 1.97, 1.975, that would get you to the 600,000. Mr. Green, go ahead. Okay, so we make it 1.975. Make more sense. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. McLean, comment? I, I take it that's a yes. 1.975, so Mr. Wild, give us the protocol of procedure. Mr. I would say uh, if we had three quarters of that year in calculating, I'm doing now doing my quick calculation on this. Sorry to hold you up, everybody. I'll take your time. One percent is that, and that's going to come back to this. I'm not really sure I calculate all of this correctly. <laughs> Calculating pi. Thank you very much. Um, do we have a motion? Do uh, an amendment. Do an amendment. Do an amendment. We need an amendment. Uh, Mr. Green, why don't you? Uh, I make a motion that we amend bill. Mm -hmm. this, uh, and it's um, bill seventy six. Bill seventy six to uh, the earned income tax credit rate ordinance to oh, one by one point nine seven five percent. For the total, uh, temp, uh, or the total increase, which was uh, 0 0.035. Uh, 
Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Mota. Um, by common consent, we okay? All council members by common, okay? We'll, we'll vote on, we're, we're gonna vote on the amendment, Mr. Hanlon. Yeah, vote on the amendment, and that would be a slight reduction in the EIT rate increase, and I would bring it to 1.975. On the amendment, we have Mr. Hendricks. Yes. McLean? Yes. Wire? Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Yes. Napa? No. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. President, the amendment passes. The amendment passes six to one. And now we will vote on the entire bill, uh, 76 EIT tax rate ordinance. Comments from my colleagues who discussed this? Any comments from the public? Mr. Hammond, call the vote, please. Okay, the bill is amended. Uh, Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Ms. McLean? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Mota? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Ms. Zappa? No. Yeah, Mr. Green? Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Hanlon, Bill 77, the tax rate ordinance. Bill 77 uh, basically adjusts the uh, tax uh, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017. That maintains the same rate. Comments from the council? Council members? Comments from the public? Mr. Hanlon, Paul Bowe. Uh, Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mota? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Zappa? Yes. Mr. Greedy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. President, seven years in the day. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'd like to at this time in, introduce a, a motion, or a, a motion that, that all these bills that we discussed and voted on this evening constitute the budget for 2017. I make the motion, do I have a second? Second. By common consent? Okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, the motion was that all these bills we voted on this evening constitute the budget uh, for 2017. I made the motion, I believe Mr. Giddy made a second. It was not by common consent. Uh, then Ms. Uh, Ms. Wild, then we vote on this motion that I just made, correct? That's correct. Okay, Mr. Hanlon, call a, call a vote. Okay, on the uh, motion to uh, vote on the amendment, I'll make the motion Bills that voted on tonight that constitute the budget for 2017. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Mota? Yes. Mr. O'Connell? Yes. Ms. Zappa? No. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. And Mr. McLean? Yes. Okay, that, that's on. Okay, and now we, um, now we vote second. on. The, uh, uh, Mr. Ms. Wilder, we vote on the, uh, we vote on the whole thing, or did we just do that? I think that's what we just did. Ms. Wild, um, basically, I'm gonna clarify this for people in the public. What we just did uh, there, we, we basically, we did a final vote for the 2017 budget, correct? Yes, we just adopted the budget. Yeah. So you basically adopted ignoring the recent budget? <laughs> or do you not? <laughs> I said, Mr. Minute, what? You're ignoring the resubmitted budget in violation of the charter. Don't you have a comment? No comment, Mr. Hamlet. Let's move on for resolution for final passage to be voted on. We have some new ones tonight. Okay, R170 uh, approves the capital improvement program as a measure. Okay, comments from my colleagues? Capital project plan? Comments from the public? Mr. Hammond, call the vote. Mr. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Mota. Yes. Mr. O'Connell. Yes. Ms. Appa. Yes. Mr. Greedy. Yes. Mr. Hendricks. Yes. Mr. Glenn. Yes. Mr. Hammond, resolution 184. Uh, resolution 184 authorizes submission of an application uh, to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Um, Multi-Mobile Transportation Fund for Grant of 967 Okay, I need some clarification on this from um, administration. The uh, items that are being brought here on R184 and R185 are being accompanied say, uh, by your, uh, your kindness this evening with uh, uh, three very small 
uh, contractual items with an entity that Public Works will attest to as being almost 100% in winning their grants for this. There's a very tight window in which these grants need to be uh, applied for, which is by uh, late next week. There's a very tight time frame, and so along with your authorization to apply for the grants, we're also putting forward the accompanying uh, contract requests to have the professional grant wider if we time. And you th I think you said December 16th? That is correct. Okay, yes. that's, okay. comments from my colleagues about R184? Comments from the public, R184. Mr. Hammer, call vote. Uh, Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mona? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Reedy? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Blake? 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 Yes. Mr.
R188 is an authorization for engagement, engagement of professional services with the CAN Associates in the amount of $4,775. Comments from my colleagues? Comments from the public? Mr. Hamilton, I'll vote on R188. R188. Uh, Ms. Atma? Yes. Mr. Greeny? Yes. Mr. Greeny? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Ordinance for introduction, we have none. Resolutions for introduction, we have none. Any new business from my colleagues? Anything for good and welfare? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Second? So moved by common consent. Long evening, have a good evening.